Hello everybody, in this video we are going to look at the Raspberry Pi Pico and what you will need to get started. We will look at how to solder the header pins and then how to set up the IDE and to install either MicroPython or CircuitPython on your Pico. When you order the Pico it will come in a package like this. Unless you have paid an extra fee for the vendor to solder the pins on for you, but in our case we will have to do it ourselves. Here is everything you will need to solder the pins on a Pico. A Raspberry Pi Pico, header pins. The one here is a 40 mm header strip and they are very common but keep in mind they come in different lengths. The one here is 20 mm. The Pico has 20 pins on each side so we can cut this header pin in half. For the debug controller you will need 3 more pins which is optional. Here we have a soldering iron which is currently not heated up. It has a fin tip to make it easier to solder. And here we also have a holder and sponge to clean the tip as needed. You'll also need to ensure when you do solder to either have an extractor fan or good ventilation. Eye protection will also be needed since flux with the solder will create fumes. Since most solder has lead inside, I would also recommend wearing gloves or just to make sure that you wash your hands after use. To keep the pins in place, I will use the solderless breadboard. But you can use other methods like blue tick or vera board to keep the headers in place. All that you need to do now is heat up the soldering iron and start to solder. To solder these pins all you have to do is heat up the pin and pad from one side while feeding in solder from the other side until it starts to melt and makes a good connection like this. Now repeat the same process 39 times. Here we have a soldered Raspberry Pi Pico. You can take this a step further and clean up the board with some solder flux remover. Now before we plug in the Pico into our computer, let's make sure to install an IDE to program in. So before we can start programming our Pico, we need to make sure that we have an IDE that stands for an integrated development environment that we will use to write code that will be sent from our computer through an interpreter to the Pico to execute. The one we are going to use is called Fony. Fony will be an integrated development environment for use to write MicroPython code or we can also use it with CircuitPython. Fony comes already installed on a Raspberry Pi OS but if you have a Mac or a PC you will have to download it. You can download Fony by typing in your browser Fony.org. In the top right hand corner of the browser window you will see download links for Windows and Mac OS and the instructions for Linux. Download the relevant files and run them to install Fony. When you open Fony, you should have something like this. Now let's install the MicroPython firmware on your Pico. Now there are two ways we can add MicroPython firmware. The first method will be to use Fony to flash the firmware. Find the boot cell button on your Raspberry Pi Pico. Press the boot cell button and hold it while you connect the other end of the micro USB to your computer. Once the USB is plugged in, it will put your Pico into a USB mass storage device. Open Fony on your computer and at the bottom left of the program, you will see the current version of Python that is on your device. Click on the version and you will click a menu to select MicroPython for the Raspberry Pi Pico. A dialog box will pop up to install the latest version of MicroPython firmware onto your Pico. Click on the install button to copy the firmware to your Pico. You do not have to update the firmware every time you use your Raspberry Pi Pico. You can just plug it into your computer without pressing the boot cell button. The second method is to download MicroPython firmware from the Raspberry Pi website. So when you plug in your Raspberry Pi Pico, open your mass storage device and open the Foley link on your browser or index.htmm which will open the browser for you. Click on MicroPython and then scroll down and look for the MicroPython UF2 file. Click on the download UF2 file button to download the MicroPython firmware. Save this file in any folder. Here I have the UF2 file, I'll copy this and go to the computer. The Raspberry Pi is located here as a mass storage device and I will right click and paste the file. This will install the firmware on your Pico and device will disconnect. Now go into Fony again and you will see once we select the interpreter to be MicroPython it will show the current version of MicroPython that is installed onto your Raspberry Pi Pico. Now let's start off with a simple program. To print hello world we will use the print function and type hello world and once we press the play button or run it will ask us where we want to save our program. Now go ahead and select the Pico Remember to save it as a .py file so we can call our program anything so let's just call it print.py. And here we can see the output of our program. Now let's blink the onboard LED on the Pico 
To get started, we'll import a few libraries. The machine library and time library will give us access to the pins and hardware on the Pico and different timers. Libraries are code with functions that we can use within our program. Now, the onboard LED is connected to pin 25, so we create a variable and let's call this variable onboard LED and we will set it equal to that pin. So we'll say machine.pin and we'll say pin 25 and we'll make this a machine.pin out. So that will make it an output. Now let's create a loop to keep running our code. So we will create a while through loop and inside the loop we'll set our onboard LED value to be 1 which will send out a high output or a 3.3 volt and using our uTime library we can access the sleep function to let our Pico wait a few seconds so let's make this 2 seconds and then we'll turn the value to 0 wait another 2 seconds and since this is inside this loop it will run forever so let's upload this to the Pico and we can see our onboard LED stays on for 2 seconds and stays off for 2 seconds now let's look at CircuitPython to install CircuitPython go to the following website and click on downloads and the first one on the page you will see the Raspberry Pi Pico download the .uf2 file and do the same process by holding the boot cell button, plugging in the Pico and copying over the UF2 file to your Pico mass storage device to flash CircuitPython. Now CircuitPython has its own built-in libraries. So let's write the Blink example in CircuitPython. Here we will import the board, digital IO and time library. Let's create the variable onboard LED and we'll set this equal to digital.io and we'll go to the digital in and out and we'll select the board LED which is pin 25 and then we want to make sure it is an output so we will say led.direction is equal to digital io and that direction will be output then to create a loop we'll again say while true then we'll set our onboard led equal to one use the time.sleep for two seconds set the onboard led to zero and then say time sleep two seconds again and we will save this on our Pico and once we have flashed this on our Pico we will see the LED to start flashing as it will stay on for 2 seconds and off for 2 seconds. This is in short how you will get started with MicroPython and CircuitPython on a Raspberry Pi Pico. For more tutorials and projects related to the Raspberry Pi Pico consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.